Author's Playhouse. Presenting Lafcadio Hearn's moving story of immortal sacrifice, The Soul of the Great Bell. The spell of ancient China has always fascinated artists of the Western world. In our time, few writers have recreated the magic charm of Cathay with the incomparable artistry of Lafcadio Hearn. Tonight, Author's Playhouse presents one of Lafcadio Hearn's most famous stories, The Soul of the Great Bell. The water clock marks the hour in the Ta Chugza, in the tower of the great bell. Now the mallet is lifted to smite the lips of the metal monster. The bell's lips inscribed with Buddhist texts from the sacred Fa Hua King, from the chapters of the holy Lin Yen King. Hear the great bell responding. How mighty her voice, though tongueless. the little dragons on the high-tilted eaves of the green roofs shiver to the tips of their gilded tails under that deep wave of sound. All the porcelain gargoyles tremble on their carven perches. All the hundred little bells of the pagodas quiver with desire to speak. And after each huge shock, how wondrous the multiple echo and the great golden moan. And at last the sudden sibilant sobbing in the ears, when the immense tone faints away in broken whispers of silver, as though a woman should whisper, he I. Even so, the great bell hath sounded every day for well nigh five hundred years. Kon Yai. First with stupendous clang, then with immeasurable moan of gold, then with silver murmuring of Hiai. And there is not a child in all the many colored ways of the old Chinese city who does not know the story of the great bell, who cannot tell you why the great bell says Kon Yai and Hiai. Now, this is the story of the great bell in the Ta Chung Za, as the same is related in the Pei Hia Tu Chu, written by the learned Yu Pao Tsen of the city of Kuang Cha Fu. <laughs> Honored master. Well, Chang, what is it? Most honored master of this court of metal workers. This unworthy person brings word that in the outer room awaits a high personage who bears a packet on which is the seal of the All Highest, the Emperor of the Kingdom. I will go to him at once. Have wine brought and rice cakes. It is already accomplished, Master.
welcome in the unworthy house of this humble molder of metals. I bow before the most worthy official, Kuan Yu. My simple abode is not fit for the messenger of the celestial august emperor of the kingdoms. To your skilled hand, I bring the command of the mighty Yang Lo of the illustrious Ming Dynasty. I prostrate myself before the hand and seal of the all-highest emperor of the kingdom. See that the word of the emperor of the kingdoms is brought to pass in the smallest detail, caster of molten metal. It shall be as the emperor commands. Will not the honorable bearer of the imperial word wait to partake of my unworthy wine? At the risk of not fulfilling the seven courtesies of hospitality, Kuan Yu, this low person must continue on his way. But the honor of your offer will be remembered. May I conduct you to the gate? It is not necessary. On the business of the Emperor of the Kingdoms, one's feet have wings. Very well. May the gods speed you on your august way. I bow. Farewell. Enter, daughter. Father, is it permitted for this humble daughter to inquire the purse of that proud person's visit? It is permitted, my child. Here is the missive he left with me. Oh, it is a seal of the emperor. There is naught to fear. Uh, let us open the packet and read the contents. How beautiful the characters in the decoration. The hand of the emperor is ever beautiful. Uh, but listen, daughter. Your humble parent has been greatly honored. From the celestially august, the son of heaven, Yong Lo, to the worthy official, Kuan Yu, it is commanded that he shall have made a bell of such size that the sound thereof may be heard for the distance of 100 li. Oh. Further, it is ordained that the voice of the bell be strengthened with brass, deepened with gold, and sweetened with silver and that the face and great lips of it shall be graven with blessed sayings from the sacred books, and that it shall be suspended in the center of the imperial capital to sound through all the many-colored ways of the city of Peking. Father! See, my child, look down upon the labor of these men and wonder at the power in the word of an emperor. Most illustrious father, these are not the men accustomed to work in the court below. No, little Tonyai. These are the master molders, the most renowned bellsmiths in the empire. Truly is it written, the master may accomplish only according to the skill of his workers. How oh, wise, my father. Most worthy Kuan Yu. The mold is prepared. The metals are fused in the melting pot. Master, we are ready to pass. Father, I fear. It is but the roar of the boiling metal that frightens you, my child. The crucible is so huge. It seems filled with liquid flame. That is right, my child. And the flame roars as the elements boil and fuse together. Now watch the Tutonia. Watch the creation of a mighty voice that shall be heard over a hundred leagues. You may pour the alloy into the mold, my master. It is time. See, the mold is cool. In my country, we work not this way. In your country, they cast toys. It is two weeks now that the metal has been cooling. 
Surely the heart of the bell is forged. Yes. Most worthy masters, the mold and the metal may now become separate. With care, Chang, drive the wedges gently and split the mold, that the voice of the bell may become free. Ready, men? Now, begin. The proportions of the alloy will exactly as defined. The spires were even on the bow. Chang, how do you account for this? Most worthy master, it is beyond the comprehension of this humble artist. Come closer. Examine for yourself. See the crack from lip to doom. The lips are warped, slagged, split. There is no uniformity. Oh, oh, not my not masters, it is not masters. The fault is not yours. It is that the metals have rebelled one against the other. The gold has scorned alliance with the brass. The silver would not mix with the molten iron. Let the moles be prepared once more and the fires rekindled. Let the work begin again. <laughs> Mighty, most august emperor of the kingdoms, the bell thou didst command from Kwan Yu hath been cast, but the work was as nothing. It must be performed again. We have heard. We are not pleased. This time, we shall speak nothing. second time the fires roared, a second time the metal swirled and simmered in the boiling cauldron, and finally a second time the bell is cast, the wedges inserted in the mold. Easy. This time we must not fail. Gently. Gently. From the mighty Long Yo, the celestial and august, Wan Yu and Fu Yin, twice thou hast betrayed the trust we have deigned to place with thee. If thou fail a third time in fulfilling our command, Thy head shall be severed from thy neck. Tremble and obey. It's so. It's so. Yes, come to me. I cannot sleep. It's so. What is it, little one? Why does not sleep come to your weary eyelids? Rest cannot come before mine eyes until the fate which o'erhangs my father has been safely put away. There is naught for a daughter to do save pray the gods that harm will not befall her. Yes, yes, you do not understand. Your kindness soothes me, but it cannot lift this terror that has come upon me. Your thrice-honored parent will surely succeed the third time the bell is cast. I must be certain. If there were but a way to pierce the gray veil of the future. Only the gods may know what is in store. I must know. 
All day I hear the roar of the fires beneath the cauldron in the yard. And it is to me the roar of the mob as the executioner's sword descends in glittering arc. At night I seek the release of sleep. And I am suffocated in the enveloping folds of the unknown tomorrow. It's so. My nurse. My friend since childhood. I must know. I must have certainty. It is not seemly for the grown woman child of an honored Mandarin thus to weep, thus to speak in the wild tones of a beaten peasant. It's so. In the mountains. In the many-colored hills where you were born. There are, I have heard, soothsayers who can tell the future from the heart of a crystal out of the glowing coals of a fire. Those are the tales of childhood to soothe the sickly infant. You have been as my mother to me. Nurse, nurse, tell me the tales. For I am as a child in terror for my father. Come to me. Place thy wearied head thus as thou didst when thou wert but a child, I before thy feet were yet bound. So, rest, be calm, and I will tell thee what I have heard. It is good. It is good to be once more at rest upon the heart of one who loved me. Tell me, nurse. There is a tale born of winter sorrow in my native hills that in all the circling stars that are the pathway to the abode of the gods, in the orbits of those ever-whirling bits of icy fire is the secret of our journeys here on earth. There are some who profess to read that secret, who profess to chart from those whirling lights the courses of our destiny. I am not sure. I, I have but heard the tale. All I know is there is one who dwells at the crossing of the street of the opal with the way of the emerald sun who may read those stars and tell thee that which may put thee at peace. Let me write. So here at my window, I look out upon the all-encompassing night. I look upward to those silver lanterns of soft light, which poets say are made for lovers. There, perhaps, I shall find surcease from all my terror. Nurse, tomorrow morn I go to the street of the opal. the doorway, Itzu. Your most honored father would not be pleased. We will say no more. This is what I must do. It is not a savory place for the daughter of a mandarin. The marketplaces of China are filled with the perfume of life. Let me go. But not alone, my miss. This is something I must do alone, Itzu. The daughter of my ancestors lacks not in courage. I shall await you on the doorstep. Make haste before our absence becomes too prolonged. Let it be so. Pull the bell cord. A place with such a sound cannot be evil. Deign to cross my unworthy threshold, beauteous lady. How can you tell I'm beauteous? My veils are well-placed, astrologer. The grace of your bearing harbingers of beauty, my mistress. I shall enter your establishment, O oh, purveyor of the gracious spoken word. I bow. I am seven times honored. My thanks, reader of the stars. A moment, and I will loose these veils. Now I am quite honored by the presence of so much beauty and by the person of the daughter of the great Kuan Yu, the Hui Yin. How do you know me? The words of the poet do not pass through the street of the Opal unheeded, my lady. I am deeply honored. I have come to borrow your wisdom, astrologer. For wisdom, the price is never small, my lady. I will pay a great price for the answer to my question. Even 100 pieces of silver, mistress? Even 100 pieces of silver? What is your question, daughter of the Mandarin? By what means may my father be saved? I... Your honored parents 
task is indeed great. For this answer, there are many calculations to be made. Time is passing with every drop that leaves the water clock, astrologer. Within the space of but two hours, the fiery liquid will be poured into the mold. I will make haste. First, incense for the placating of the gods. Now, I mark the aspect of the silver stream that some call the Milky Way. The pathway of light to the celestial gate. Now, upon this chart, I examine the signs of the zodiac, the Huang Tao, or the Yellow Road. And now... The table of the five hymns, or principles of the universe. And finally, the mystical book of the alchemist. Hurry! Time is restless. Oh, the answer is clear. It is as certain as the closing of that book. I hang upon the essence of your words. It is written. Gold and brass will never meet in wedlock. Silver and iron will never embrace until... must be beside my honored father when the metal is poured into the mold. Give me my outer coat. I do not like this. Wedding garments on such a day. And what can be more fitting? Today gold will wed with silver. Brass with iron. The red garments of the bride are for the eyes of the bridegroom. And there is no bridegroom. The liquid in the water clock runs out. My slippers eat so. Here, here, as you wish it. My mother's slippers. From the day of her wedlock. How time. They fit almost into the palm of my unworthy hand. I think I love them more than any other thing that I possess. You are sentimental and you tease by turning. What did the evil person of the street of the Opal say to you? I know the secret of my father's future. Come, Itsu. I am ready. Am I not beautiful? You are more lovely than the red lily that grows by the streams in my native hills. Come, Ito. My father waits. My daughter, and in your bridal garment. Today, my honored father, you will be wed to success. As the gold to the brass and the silver to the iron. Is it not fitting that I honor my direct ancestor with these gods? The gods will not look with favor it's upon me. It matters not. Metal is prepared. The mold is ready. See below there. All the skill and patience of myriad workmen have been bent to the fulfillment of the emperor's command. This time we shall not fail. You shall not fail, my father. Are we ready, my master? We await the signal, mighty Mandarin. What told you there? I slipped. I tried to grasp her as she leaped. It's all that remains. A tiny thing of embroidery, of pearl and flower. Master, shall we pour? My masters, we pour. It is the command of the emperor.
master. The bell is true, perfect. I see. I see the gold is wedded brass and the silver embraced iron. The bell is suspended. It is ready, master. Let the bell be struck. It has a mighty voice, though tongueless. The emperor will be pleased. like the peal of summer thunder, and yet it has the sound of a woman's name. Kon Yai, for that which the astrologer in the street of the opal told the maiden was... Gold and brass will never meet in wedlock. Silver and iron will never embrace until the flesh of a maiden be melted in the crucible. Until the blood of a virgin be mixed with the metals in their fusion. And to this day, well nigh 500 years, between each mighty stroke there is a long, low moaning heard. And ever the moaning ends with the sound of sobbing and complaining. As though a weeping woman should murmur, he I. And still, when the people hear that great golden moan, they keep silence. But when the sharp, sweet shuddering comes in the air, and the sobbing of he I, then indeed do all the Chinese mothers, in all the many colored ways of Peking, whisper to their little ones, Listen. That is Konyai crying for her slipper. Listen, that, that is Konyai crying for her slipper. You have heard the soul of the great bell, taken from Lafcadio Hearn's Chinese Ghosts, and adapted for Author's Playhouse by Ivor Merrion. Mr. Albert Cruz directed. Miss Eloise Cummer was heard as Konyai, Mr. Frederick Sullivan as Kuan, and Mr. William Everett was the narrator. <laughs>